Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines: Historic Colombian national strike reaches one-month mark. You went to investigate rights violations in Palestinian territories in Israel. Anti-imperialist activists denounce U.S. Senate bill targeting China. And in our final story, we take a look at the day of resistance marking six months of the ongoing Indian farmer struggle. In our first story, May 28th marks one month since the beginning of the mass uprising across Colombia. What began as a national strike against a proposed tax reform has turned into a struggle against state violence and worsening socio-economic conditions. Working class and indigenous communities have also denounced the assassination of social leaders and peace signatories. Other demands include better health care and education facilities, the dissolution of the notorious riot control unit or SMAD. However, the government has continued to respond with alarming levels of police violence and militarization. An investigation by the New York Times has also confirmed the use of disproportionate and lethal force including live ammunition. Despite these routine instances of violence, people have continued to take to the streets. The National Strike Committee announced on May 24th that a pre-agreement had been reached with the government. One of the central issues raised was guarantees for exercise of social protest. However, they have not reached a consensus on all demands. The Central Union of Workers announced on May 27th that the government had not signed the agreement and that meetings would continue. In the meantime, mass mobilizations are set to take place on May 28 and 29th. Here is People's Dispatch correspondent Zoe Alexander to talk more about the historic uprising. Hi, and thank you for having me. So today, May 28th, it marks exactly one month since the national strike began in Colombia. And as we've covered for the last one month at People's Dispatch, we know that these protests originally began as a citizen rejection to the tax reform law, which was going to raise taxes for the working class in Colombia, but now have grown into protests that mean that go much further and with demands that go much further. Um, so we've seen people on the street um, demanding that the Havana peace agreements be implemented. Uh, they've demanded a demilitarization of the cities because of course, with this one month of protests, something that we've also been covering continuously at People's Dispatch is the very brutal state repression and response from state forces to the protesters. So up until today, uh, there are over 50 people that have been assassinated by state forces over 1,000 people that have been arbitrarily detained, over 20 people that have been sexually assaulted by police forces during the last month, and hundreds of disappeared people. And there have been reports coming in over the past couple of weeks of bodies that are turning up in the rivers nearby the cities where these protesters have been disappeared. Um, and despite all of the best intentions of the gov Colombian government, I shouldn't say best intentions, but of all the intentions of the Colombian government to attack the protesters, to um, criminalize them, to stigmatize them in the media. People continue to be uh, joining the strike. They're continuing to come out in the streets. We expect that today is going to be a very big day of mobilization. Um, you know, cities across the country, towns, municipalities, people will be going out to mark one month of the beginning of these historic protests in Colombia, which without a doubt, will be changing the history of the country. Um, you know, just also wanna highlight that despite all of the repression that has been seen, we've seen a lot of these very intense images. There have also been protests that are full of culture, of music, of art, of different theater performances. And I'm sure that we're gonna be seeing a lot of that today, marking the one month. Um, and also at the same time, I, we've been reporting on the um, motion of censure against the defense minister yesterday, the Senate in Colombia voted against this motion, but the people on the street continue to demand that the defense minister must resign uh, as one step towards granting, you know, a process of justice, a process of truth to all of the victims of these attacks, as he is the person that is responsible for the actions of the police and the army in this sense. So we'll be continuing to follow the situation in Colombia and stay tuned for all of our reports from People's Dispatch on what's happening. The UN will establish a permanent commission of inquiry to examine violations during Israel's attack on Gaza. The international investigation will also look at systematic abuses in the occupied territories in Israel. This will include discrimination and repression based on national, ethnic, racial or religious identity. The UN Human Rights Council passed a resolution during the special session held on May 27th the resolution was passed with 24 members voting in favor, 9 against and 14 abstentions. The 11-day-long attack on Gaza killed at least 254 Palestinians, including 66 children. 
The UN has stated that around 2,000 people were injured and some may suffer long-term disability. Gaza's housing ministry has stated that 1,500 housing units were completely destroyed and another 1,500 were damaged beyond repair. As per a UN report released on May 27th, 8,500 people continue to be displaced. The extensive damage to power networks means that people are experiencing power cuts for up to 20 hours a day. While 97% of Gaza's water was already undrinkable, the Israeli attacks have affected water access for 800,000 people. Nine hospitals and 19 primary health centers have also been damaged. Meanwhile, an international criminal court investigation into Israel's war crimes in the occupied Palestinian territories is also already underway. Chief Prosecutor Fatah Ben Soda will examine the 2014 war on Gaza, illegal Israeli settlements in the West Bank and the attacks during the Great March of Return in 2018. Israel has declared that it will not cooperate with either investigation. Activists in the US have denounced a new trade and technology bill targeted towards China. The Senate was voted to close debate on the United States Innovation and Competition Act on May 27th. The measure was passed with a bipartisan majority of 68 to 30 and will now head for a vote. The legislation has been presented as an attempt to increase the United States' ability to compete with Chinese technology. The over 1,000-page legislation will approve a funding of $250 billion. Out of this, $54 billion will be allocated for the production of semiconductors, microchips and telecommunication equipment. However, the omnibus bill also contains several aspects proposed by the right-wing Republican Party. Large parts of it are dedicated to the Biden administration's increasingly aggressive policies towards China. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was quoted as saying, holding the Chinese Communist Party responsible for years of rapacious economic policies and theft of American ingenuity will help create a level playing field. The USIC Act includes the Endless Frontier Act and the Strategic Competition Act, among others. The latter includes provisions for the US to, quote, remain vigilant to the risks posed by the undue influence of the Chinese Communist Party. The Act will also dictate US foreign relations with countries having extensive trade with China. Anti-imperialist groups have warned that the legislation will further anti-Asian racism in the US. The country has already witnessed a rise in anti-Asian hate crimes, including the mass shooting in Atlanta in March. And in our final story, we take a look at the Day of Resistance observed across India on May 26th. The day marked six months of the completion of the ongoing farmers' struggle. However, workers and civil society groups also denounced the central government's neoliberal policies and mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's a video feature on Wednesday's protest. The historic farmer struggle in India completed six months on Wednesday, May 26th. The nationwide call given by the Sangyukt Kisan Morcha or the Joint Farmers Front was supported by various progressive organizations including the Communist Party of India Marxist, Students Federation of India, Democratic Youth Federation of India and the All India Democratic Women's Association. Farmers have been mobilizing on the borders of Delhi braving harsh weather and police repression. They continue to demand for the rollback of the three farm laws passed last year by the far-right Bharatiya Janata Party government. Farmers have time and again pointed out that the laws will drive down prices that they are likely to get for their produce. Farmers also claim that the laws would enable the complete takeover of agriculture by corporate agribusinesses and big traders. Tens of thousands of farmers across the country mark the protest by raising black flags and burning effigies of BJP leaders on May 26th. Opposition groups are also protesting the mishandling of the pandemic by the central government. The second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic is a disastrous one for India, where thousands continue to die on a daily basis. The organizations put forward some key demands in a statement, which includes Use the massive funds collected under PMKS, a specialized COVID relief fund for providing oxygen, ventilators, medicines and hospital beds. Stop the Central Vista project and redirect its funds for the same purpose. The project involves the raising down of older capital buildings and the construction of new ones, including a new parliament and a prime minister residence, to the tune of approximately 1.8 billion US dollars. Make treatment for COVID-19 free and also provide free and universal vaccination. Strictly regulate private hospitals and prevent the fleecing of patients with exorbitant bills. Allocate substantial funds for strengthening the public health system. Immediately transfer 7,500 rupees, which is around 100 US dollars, to low income families below the income tax bracket. And provide 10 kilograms of free food grains to all who need it for six months, along with essential items like pulses, oil, and sugar through the public distribution system. Samyukto Kisan Morcha and Central Trade Unions, along with SFI, IDUA, 
and DYFI gave a nationwide call, protest call, to observe May 26 on marking the sixth month of historic farmers' protest in India. And it's also the seventh anniversary of the inhuman Modi Raj. And in this protest call, lakhs of people participate in this call and we'd like to congratulate all of them. And all the people from Kashmir to Kanyakumarika, from Kutch to Kohima, they have participated. It's a historic, undoubtedly. And especially if they are protesting against this corporate and Hindu Hindutva nexus. This nexus is trying to destroy everything in, our, in, the, in India. And especially their cruel behavior, this cruel attitude is opened, revealed in this pandemic situation. People are dying rampantly, a lack of oxygen, bed, and this is just, and government is completely reluctant. They are now busy to build, uh, I mean, statues and central vista using crores, thousands of crores of uh, uh, rupees. And in this situation, we also demand, we demand that free vaccination for all, which is a legacy of, of uh, India, uh, I mean, this independent India. And we also demand monetary health for the needy. We demand that provide, uh, we, we, uh, government must provide this free, uh, free vaccination and healthcare facilities to everyone. And with this, all these demands, there are so many demands are there, these change demands actually we are protesting. And the ra and voice of dissent is increasing every day in our country against this Modi Raj. And we built uh, this much more uh, gathering and after this uh, pandemic is over, and they, it, will, it, will, it will remove this Modi Raj from their from their from their power, we believe that, and we, again we salute the, all of all people who participate in this protest. It's in, undoubtedly a historic. Farmers' organizations have reiterated that they will not back down until the regressive farm laws are revoked. As the struggle continues, more protests are expected soon. That's all your time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.